Gordon was cross. Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon. We're glad to have you with us again, but remember what I said. Later, Henry stopped at Edward's station. Hello, Henry, said Edward. You look splendid. I was pleased to hear your happy whistle yesterday. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. Shh, can you hear something? It sounds like Gordon, said Edward, and it ought to be Gordon. But Gordon never whistled like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate. Didn't look at Henry, and he didn't look at Edward. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward. It isn't wrong, chuckled Henry, but we just don't do it. And he told Edward what Gordon had said. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gordon screeched along the line. The noise was awful. At the station, everyone covered their ears. Sir Topham Hatt covered his ears, too. Take him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. Gordon puffed sadly away, but he wouldn't stop whistling until two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve in place. That night, Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. Next morning, Henry was enjoying himself enormously. I feel so well. I feel so well, he sang. trickety truck, trickety truck, hummed his coaches. Then he saw some boys on a bridge. Beep, beep. Hello, he whistled. Oh, he called. The boys didn't wave and take his number. They thought fun to drop stones on him instead. They've broken our glass. They've broken our glass, cried the coaches. The passengers weren't hurt, but they were cross. Call the police. No, said the driver. Leave it to Henry and me. What will you do, they asked. Can you keep a secret? Yes, yes. Well then, said the driver, Henry is going to sneeze at those boys. Lots of people were waiting at the station just before the bridge. They wanted to see what would happen. Henry has plenty of ashes, said the driver. Please keep all windows shut till we've passed the bridge. Henry's as excited as we are, aren't you, old fellow? Henry felt more stuffed up than excited. Soon they could see the boys, and they all had stones. Are you ready, Henry? said the driver. Sneeze hard when I tell you. Now! He said. Achoo! Well done, Henry, laughed his driver. Henry went home, hoping that next time he saw Gordon and the boys, they would have learned not to be so mean. Gordon was resting in the siding. Sometimes he thought, it's really tiring to be such a large and splendid engine. One does have to keep up appearances, so. <laughs> Lazy bones, whistled Henry. What cheek, spluttered Gordon. That Henry is too big for his wheels. Fancy speaking to me like that. Me, who has never had an accident. Our 
jammed whistles and burnt safety valves? Accidents? Asked Percy innocently. No, indeed. High spirits. Might happen to any engine. But to come off the rails like Henry did, well, I ask you, is that right? Is it decent? Then it was Henry's turn to take the express. Gordon watched him getting ready. Be careful, Henry. You're not pulling the flying kipper now. Mind you, keep on the rails today. Henry went off in a huff, and Gordon yawned and went to sleep. But not for long. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and we're to pull it. Is it coaches or freight cars? Cars, said his driver. Cars, said Gordon. <laughs> Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go! I won't go! grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly! Don't be silly! puffed Edward. At last, Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table. But he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Oosh, he hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned Sir Topham Hatt. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch? What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please, and, and Gordon... Leave him where he is. Get him out later. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Oh, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh, dear, he thought. I shall never get out. But that evening they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine.